Gentlemen, we have a quorum, so we're going to get started. Appreciate everybody showing up this morning, uh, particularly the committee members. Everybody's got a having some long days right now, and I uh, appreciate very much the appropriations committee uh, coming at uh, for this meeting this morning. Uh, we're going to call HB 279, and uh, let me just uh, preface that by saying, I, I, in the interim since our last meeting, I appointed a subcommittee of uh, Senator Bethel, Senator Thompson and Senator Kazert as a subcommittee to work on that. And uh, in the interim, uh, the author of their underlying bill, uh, Representative Powell, who's here this morning, has uh, been involved in those discussions with the subcommittee. And we have a committee sub uh, in your folder. And we're going to be speaking from LC 296628S. So if you'll check and be sure you've got the right sub, uh, the been a couple of three renditions. So, um, Senator Bethel, um, we'll recognize Representative Powell just to maybe touch on the the bill, and then we'll let, we'll let Senator Bethel cover the sub if that's okay with you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this has been a, a work in process since the beginning of the session. It started with an across the board pay raise, and. Uh, then generated into a state supplement. Oh, volume, okay. And is now back to an across the board pay raise. And uh, it started out as a $12,000 across the board pay raise for uh, Court of Appeals, Supreme Court, Superior Court, DA's public defender, chief or circuit public defender. And now it's a 5% across the board pay raise. Uh, these uh, judges have not had a pay raise since 1999. Uh, you'll notice in there that, that there is a, it appears to be more than 5%, but what is in reality showing is that since 1999, there have been some cost of in, uh, living increases. And so what we're looking at is 5% across the board based on what the current pay is. Uh, there's also a, an incentive to circuits that have an accountability court, and it's six thousand dollars for the superior court judges, uh, six thousand dollars for the district attorney, and six thousand dollars for the circuit public defender if they have accountability courts in their circuit. Uh, there's also a per diem for uh, a court of appeals and supreme court justices that live outside of a 50 mile radius of the judicial building in Atlanta to recognize the fact that many of them live outside this area. And then finally, there is a uh, compensation commission appointment. And uh, Senator Bethel, I think, is going to get into this a little bit more. But this is the crux of it, because what we're doing now is addressing the fact that there haven't been pay raises in quite some time. But we also recognize we don't know what that number needs to be ultimately. And so there's going to be a commission to study that for us. So uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd be happy to. I tell you what, let's let Senator Bethel continue and, and cover the uh, the, the uh, committee sub this morning. I also want to thank Chairman Powell for working with me uh, on this issue, and a lot of members of um, Prosecuting Attorneys Council and the Judicial Branch um, for helping to educate me in this process, and the subcommittee for their work on the committee sub that's before you. Obviously, the first page of the sub is really just the caption, uh, dealing with all of the issues that are in the substitute. So if you turn to page two, um, a longstanding issue for our appellate courts in Georgia is that members of the appellate courts who live outside of the metro Atlanta area um, basically have a financial burden relative to their peers that live inside because they have to come here for terms of court. Uh, and so what section 1-1 and section 1-2 would do is allow uh, each member of those appellate panels 30 per diem days uh, similar to those that we experienced during each term of court uh, so that uh, hopefully we would offset some of the burden for those that have to drive in uh, and sometimes oftentimes make uh, alternative arrangements for their home and housing while they're in the capital city. Um, section 1-3 is really just technical language that allows for the state supplements that you'll hear about here as we turn the pages, um, but to be calculated in the pay for superior court judges. 
turning on to page three, uh, this is an initiative that uh, comes out of the governor's office uh, to reward and incentivize those circuits that are participating in our accountability court model. Uh, so you'll see in paragraph A uh, that we are proposing a state supplement to each judge in a circuit with an accountability court of $6,000. Again, um, th there's extra workload, but we all recognize, and I think the legislature has supported um, uh, consistently the accountability courts model and the savings that that presents to the state uh, is substantial as well. You will notice, and, and Chairman Powell, um, in, in the original bill that, that came out of the House, and uh, many of us share the concern about the growing spread with respect to local supplements in paragraph C, you will see that we are, we are calling for uh, basically a freeze of local supplements at or above $50,000. Um, that hopefully will allow the Compensation Commission, which is the last section in this bill, the opportunity uh, to get their, our arms collectively around that issue and what's the right and fair way to address it. Uh, I, don't, I don't anticipate that being a permanent uh, issue, but uh, certainly allows us to, uh, to address it uh, before, the, before the issue gets worse. Um, the bottom half of section of page three, section 1.5, that is again for district attorneys creating that same technical language that allows for this local supplement associated with accountability courts. You will see that uh, on the top of page four, um, lines 94 through uh, 102, deal with the award of each district attorney who had in a circuit with an accountability court would get that same six thousand dollar stipend that we've talked about and again we would have a fifty thousand dollars or above freeze on local supplements um, section one seven uh, we transition into circuit public defenders the language in this code section is different because of where the circuit public defenders reside in our code, but the effect is the same. You will see uh, we propose raising, and that is the 5% across the board increase um, that you'll see on 117 to 99,526. Um, section 1-8, which is on page five, uh, this is the supplement, the state supplement of $6,000 to circuit public defenders in every circuit where there is uh, an accountability court model. The bottom of page five, uh, and Chairman Powell mentioned this, and I just want to draw the members' attention to it. Um, this is the increase for justices of the Supreme Court, judge of the Court of Appeals, and Superior Court judges. Those numbers, and, and I don't really understand why we've done this, we, we have not increased them as we've increased them. So uh, the code does not reflect their current pay rate. So I will represent the members that based on accrued historic from decades ago increases, uh, the rates are now 167,000 for the Supreme Court justices, 166 uh, for Court of Appeals, um, and 120 for district attorneys. Um, in doing this across the board, 5% number, we've chosen to do what I think makes sense, which is just strike and replace, which I think should have been done all along, so that when you go to the code and ask how much does that person make, that's what they actually make, as opposed to then you have to find out what cost of living uh, changes came along. Uh, that's the same as at the top of page uh, of, of page six, and we would uh, propose that increase there as well. Um, at the at the bottom of page uh, six, starting at part two, uh, this is actually language that is um, pretty standard for us during each legislative session. Uh, seem to be stranded in the House during this session, um, but every year there's an analysis of caseload done uh, and a recommendation to the General Assembly uh, for any need for expansion of our superior courts. Uh, there was only one recommendation this year with respect to caseload. That was the Western Judicial Circuit. Uh, this language uh, is respective of that change and would expand from three to four the number of superior court judges in the Western Judicial Circuit. And that really uh, takes you all the way over to page nine because that is all of the, what I would call the traditional language associated with adding a superior court judgeship is the balance of section two, Mr. Chairman. Um, part three, section three, one, uh, this is the creation of our compensation commission. Um, we looked and there are several states, um, dozens of states I believe with uh, compensation commissions for review of judicial compensation and related matters. Um, 
we think this is an appropriate and hopefully a, a functional way of addressing this issue so that we're not in this haven't had a raise in 19 years and uh, where do we all sit so that hopefully we will periodically and intentionally look at this issue in the future um, we followed structurally a model that i found um, in maine uh, there are all sorts of models out there it seems to be very clean and direct uh, and effective in that state um, so that's basically the, the platform that we built off of. The commission would have five members. Two of them would be appointed by the governor. One of them um, would be someone experienced in executive compensation issues uh, and would not be an attorney in Georgia. The other, at the governor's discretion, could be a member of the state bar. One would be appointed by the chief justice of Georgia uh, and would be either an active or retired member of Georgia's judiciary. Uh, and then the other two would be appointed by the speaker and the lieutenant governor respectively. Neither one of those individuals uh, could be a member of the state bar of Georgia. That would ensure that the majority of the commission at any given time would not be made up of state bar members. We think from a, from a standpoint of impartiality, that's probably the right fit and, and fits with what I think the best practices are in other states. Um, the commission, as you'll see, uh, basically the next couple of pages is given um, both authority and directive. Um, the governor will designate the chair. Uh, they will be required to meet and present a report not later than December 15th of this year as their preliminary report. Um, and then a follow-up report December 15th of, of next year. And then the way we have it um, structured is they would then create a biennial report so that every two years thereafter they would be tasked with presenting a report because at some point it seems repetitive to keep giving an annual report if we can keep track of that on an updated basis. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would that, that is essentially the, the uh, report of the subcommittee and at the proper time on behalf of that subcommittee, I would, I would like to move that we do pass by substitute. All right, thank you. Senator Bethel, I appreciate your work on this and working with Representative Powell and the governor's office has uh, been an active participant as well. We've got some questions. If I'm reading this right, I'll, uh, I'll start with Senator Huffstetter, I believe. No, okay. All right, Senator Heath, do you have your line on? Go right ahead. <laughs> I, Tommy, I, I, I got Senator Williams down. Yeah, I, I, uh, It's okay. The, yes and no. The, the, the numbers that you see on your report, like the 139, the 138, those are, those are decades old numbers. And so accrued cost of living has, has come into effect but never been reflected in the actual code. And, but I don't believe there's been a cost of living adjustment in several years, and I apologize for not having the specific number. This would not include a cost of living this year. In fact, when we had testimony during the budgeting process, um, it was the testimony of all the branches that we had in the judicial subcommittee um, that the across the board cost of living increase that was included in the governor's proposal and the house added to the judicial branch would be with respect to staff um, and not judicial officers and not judges and, and that I believe has been the case now for several years so this would be a the first substantive increase in pay in quite some time and I don't know the number of years. I would, I would say that it is both, Senator, in, in the sense that, I mean, as my dad always said, money's money, right? So, you know, trying to put it in which bucket. They haven't received a cost of living increase. They also lag, um, clearly they lag the private sector, but that's a whole other analysis, and I think that's part of the reason why we have a commission. So whether you want to call it a cost of living increase, certainly there's gone by enough time and there have been other cost of living to general government since their last adjustment you could say it's to catch up or make up um, but i think it really serves both purposes uh, to improve our scale and uh, to, to sort of address cost of living differences senator williams
I think. And in looking, thank you, Senator. And in looking into this issue, I found that there are several states that do that. Um, and to the extent, probably next year, you want to work on something along those lines, I, I will be open to it. I do think um, that in making sure that, that, that that is a minority voice, that is to say it's not a majority of the commission, we allow a two-way street so that we have a representative who's there um, from the judicial branch, understands um, the nature and the interrelatedness of all the courts and things like that is an, is an important voice to have there. I should have said, and I apologize, that we also um, have named uh, the, the sitting chairs of both appropriations committees in the legislature as ex officio non-voting members. So they're not part of the five for voting purposes. But I think their voice has to be in the room when, the, when that commission works or, or, or it won't make a difference. Um, I, respect, I respect your opinion. I, I do think that it seems that there are several states that allow there to be uh, one or more member of the judiciary present on these commissions. Um, and, and, it, and it seems to be working in, in those states. Sir Dowers. Yeah, Senator, and that, that's the issue that we talked about. The fiscal note is based off of their current actual pay. That, that statutory number, um, there's been several uh, cost of living adjustments that were never actually incorporated into the code. Like, for example, on, on you know, Superior Court judges, it's 120, 120,000 and something. I can't remember the last three digits today. That's what they're actually being paid, even though in the code section it still shows them at 107905. Yeah, 167 for the Supremes, 166 for the Court of Appeals, 120 uh, for Superior Court judges, and 114 for district attorneys. I didn't write that down. And um, for circuit public defenders, the gap shouldn't be that substantial, but they are at 90. I didn't write it down, but they, they, they're 5% less than 99,526. So the money that was put into the uh, budget, uh, is that consistent with these numbers and reasons? It's not. Um, so in, in two ways, it's not. Um, first, I, I do want to point out that the fiscal note is on the as passed by the House, uh, the fiscal note that you have in your folder. Um, and so there are some discrepancies, as, as the chairman said, we're not talking about 12,000 at the appellate level. And so there's, there's an adjustment there. And that's all going to have to become, come back to discussion. Um, the, state, the, the state supplements for circuits with accountability courts would not be reflected in there. Now, that may functionally be offset by some of that difference, um, but we've got to get to that number. The answer to your question is what we put in the budget would not cover all of this. I can't give you a specific gap or differential. Um, I am hopeful that the administration who uh, brought us the proposal, which I support of the, of the supplements, uh, the state supplements, will help us um, locate the resources to fund this initiative. Um, we could, and in fact, that was a conversation that the chairman and I had, and I appreciate the House yielding on their plan for sort of the structured um, state supplement that if, you know, was based on how your local supplement worked. Um, we were in agreement, I think, that, that less complication to the process before the commission started their work would be better. Um, I, I believe, and I think the administration believes, that um, this this proposal um, shortens a gap that, that we recognize as being there in our compensation structure. And whatever the commission comes back with, it's not going to say you overdid it. 
um, we're going to have to evaluate what we what, what our options are going forward. But this does not take us out of a, a competitive range from a compensation standpoint. Sarah Tate. I'm having trouble understanding. I'm sorry. I, I, I've, I've tried to turn the volume up, but it, it starts beeping every time I do it. But if you speak right into it, well, maybe we can hear you. Okay. If you're talking about me, I'd have missed it completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, how's, how's it? <laughs> They're on. Yes, Senator. Um, Western is Clark and Oconee. Is that right? Somebody, I, I think it's those two. Yeah, Clark, Clark and Oconee counties. There is um, a standard process that, I, as, as far as I know, is very old. I mean, I don't know, decades old. Um, the, 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 the AOC and, and other entities evaluate caseloads in Superior Court um, and go through a process of recommending what Superior Courts um, should be getting an, an additional judgeship next. Uh, my understanding is, is, I think there's been testimony on the House side, is that in fact this was the only recommendation on the list this year uh, that met their criteria for the need for an additional judge. So th that, that, that is why it, that was put forward in the House. It, um, as I said earlier, I think it, it stranded over there for reasons not related to the merits of the um, underlying bill and so uh, since the opportunity is here to continue the process of making sure our courts are adequately staffed that's why we included it that's i think it's just those two counties yes ma'am thank you sir sir again i think you're next So I'll do them in reverse if I could, Senator. Um, there are several positions by local law uh, whose salaries are tied to one or more of these positions, Superior Court judge, district attorney, things like that. Um, those are choices that localities have made and can continue to make or change at, at their discretion. So it's a long list. Um, and I think actually Chairman Powell has done a really good job of, of gathering that list um, and accumulating it and he or I could help you if, if you have a specific request to, to perhaps your district or anything like that to, to resolve that but I don't I don't have it it's it's, it's pretty extensive um, going back to the issue of capping as I said I, I, I meant to say in my pre initial remarks I, I hope that the Commission will come to us uh, with a proposal that allows us to go in and strike that language at some point in time. The issue I think that we're most concerned about is the acceleration away. You have superior court judges, for example, in Georgia who make 120,000 and I believe 
200,000. That is a significant discrepancy. And, and as time goes by, you have, if you have Superior Court judges who are being paid more than Court of Appeals judges. And, and we may decide that's public policy, the best interest of the state of Georgia. I don't feel that way, but as the problem accelerates away, we need to put a, a noose around it and, and at least hold it for some period of time until we evaluate what our path forward is and the right way. The secondary issue to that that I've heard raised by a few people and I, and I think has some intellectual merit um, is that in as much as a local supplement becomes a greater and greater portion of a Superior Court judge's pay, uh, the Superior Court judge could potentially be put in a, in a pretty difficult position because Superior Court judges, as, as you may or may not know, uh, hear tax appeals in the counties in which they sit. If I'm hearing a tax appeal relative to a government who is directly paying 28 plus percent of my salary, that is a difficult posture, I, th I think, in which a judge might sit. And so we need to be, I think, strategic about making sure that we don't get so far out of balance that we're creating a situation where uh, there's even an appearance of uh, conflict of interest on, on the part of judges. Senator Crane. Should have done that, uh, especially knowing that you would be here, Senator Crane. Um, so, uh, so for there's 211 Superior Court judges. I'm trying. Uh, uh, you you may do math faster than I do in my head, and maybe Senator Heath does. 211 Superior Court judges. 11 circuits do not participate um, in accountability court models. Um, I do not know the count of judges in those 11 circuits, um, but it's at least 11. Um, so you have a $6,000 exposure there. There are 59 circuits, somebody help me, 49 circuits, God, thank you. Uh, 49 circuits, so there's gonna be a district attorney and a circuit public defender in each of those. So that's gonna be 98 of those roles. Um, again, 11 circuits won't have an accountability court, so 22 of that 98 go away for doing the $6,000 supplement. And then the approximate amount of the increases are going to be 7,000 for the nine justices of the Supreme Court. Um, what is that? 6,000 for judges of the, for the 12 judges of the courts of appeals. Um, 211 superior court judges are going to get about 6,000 as the, that's the, not the supplement, but the actual 5%. Um, district attorneys, just under 6,000 for the 49 of them. And for circuit public defenders, I think that's gonna be about 4,500, 5,000 for the 49 of them. Chairman Powell um, in his uh, committee aggregated, I don't know if the way it's presented is what they're getting paid with their supplements. It just has the supplement number and then you'd have to go and, and take what they're, what they're being paid from the state as well. There has been some discussion about whether we have all of the supplement data from every jurisdiction, but we think by and large we have the right numbers. Um, They sit for three terms, Judge, is that right? Yeah, yeah. They sit for three terms during the year, so that would be 90 days over the course of the year. 90 days. That's correct. Um, would anybody be eligible for more than one accountability for No, sir. Nobody serves on in two of those capacities. Well, no. So the way it's worded is if there is a accountability court, you get $6,000. 
if there's two, three, four, I mean, th there are circuits where there are more than one accountability court, but you only get the supplement once. You don't, you can't aggregate that. Although that would be really nice, I'm sure, for some circuits. It's certainly an, an option that the legislature could pursue. Um, I think uh, that my sense from the House and, and the House initiative to make this adjustment and, and my sense of the Senate, although I've been certainly wrong before on my sense of the Senate, is that there's a recognition that there needs to be uh, an adjustment and, and I think folks have, have waited uh, an, an extensive amount of time. I certainly think given the fact that the administration of the state is advancing uh, the initiative they are, uh, that would indicate that, that the administration is supportive um, of, of a move at this time. Quick, quickly, please. I can't, I cannot profit, promise someone else's work. I can commit to you um, that if they do not have a fiscal note, that I will do uh, everything to give you data to support, you know, the, the, the specific points and an aggregate number to the best of my power. And plus that, the current pay scale uh, is made Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Senator Hill. Well, the two things. Um, accountability court has sort of a, a, a general meaning and then a statutory meaning. So, um, as you know, in state courts, um, the judges are not hearing felonies, um, which obviously they are in superior court. Um, and so, while I, I think it's a worthwhile um, discussion to have about what a future state might be, I think opening the door to anything that's called an accountability court by that court against the supplement would sort of put us in, in I don't want to say jeopardy, but jeopardy of expanding it beyond what we control and have defined as a, so you got a district attorney's office, circuit public defender's office, and the superior court who work together to form and support um, the accountability court model. Um, I think it's worthwhile, I think if we create a commission it's one of the things we ought to ask them is, is does it make sense to incentivize them in lower courts um, as well? So to see. They do not fit into our direct action. As I was talking with Senator Ginn, um, Senator C, many of the local um, offices are tied by local law to increases. And so they will, would see their number move if the, the other number moved. Um, many are not. Many are done independently and directly. Um, certainly, I think it is worth our time to consider what our magistrate and probate judges are, are, are compensated and if that's fair. Um, the initiative that's been advanced really for a couple of years now and, and this initiative does not directly relate to them. Many of them will be d indirectly impacted by it.
Sheriff's here. Oh, Sir Honorman is pointing out that the sheriffs are a good example too, uh, along the same dis along the same lines of discussion. Yeah. <laughs> gets money from the sheriff. I don't know that there's an active bill, bill dealing with probate or magistrate judges pay in the legislature at this time. I don't know. Yeah. Senator Hill, you have your light on? Last question. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. My first answer of that question was more eloquent, but in short, in short, Senator Hill, um, I think that this reflects an agreement that we need to increase the pay, we need to make an adjustment, and a commitment to, in the future, not having this problem again where we're sort of always stuck and, and we're dealing with earlier. politicians and judges. Um, trying to sort through these increases and have somebody outside help us, guide us through the future of this process. Hopefully we're getting ourselves close to current and then we're talking about the commission to help us go forward. Senator Alvarez had one more question and this will wind it up. Senator Alvarez. Thanks, Senator Beck, a lot. One final question, uh, I think the same question I asked earlier, uh, is. Oh, wait a minute, this is a amendment again, a second? Oh, yeah, no. Can't do the same amendment twice now. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yeah. We've had the issue before in areas that we underpaid or we felt we needed to increase pay. As an example, the GBI, a couple years ago, we decided that they needed to increase their pay. And we did that over three years at a time uh, in order to balance the budget where we probably had at the time uh, and show that consistently over the years. My only concern, and thank you for clarifying. Well, Senator, it's certainly an option. I will say, and, and Chairman Powell, I think, will we'll vouch for this, um, that the, the judiciary's understanding of the gap uh, is that it is far more substantial than this number would reflect. So it wouldn't surprise me that they think this is the first of three years or maybe 30 years. But, um, but so I, I don't think this is, as I said earlier, this is not gobbling the whole perceived gap. Whether we all agree with that or not is another discussion. Um, but but it, it, this is a step towards where we think we, we probably ought to be. I do want to clarify because I was uh, speaking, I didn't say this and I should have, Magistrate judges and probate judges are also county employees, um, and so there's a, that's who employs them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are reached the magic hour, and if any of you guys who have bills before the Rules Committee would probably want us to get on out of here so the Rules Committee can start. Uh, I believe that Senator Bethel moved earlier uh, for passage of House Bill 279 by substitute LC 296628S. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Senator Miller and uh, Senator Ligon as well. Other discussion on this motion? Okay, I sense you're ready to vote. All in favor of passage uh, with a due pass recommendation of House Bill 279, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you, all opposed.
I see one, two, two, two. two. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it. Pass, uh, HP 279 passes out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good job. Appreciate it.